Hey everyone, it's the How To Mac, and on today's episode, I thought I would kind of go back and rehash some of the videos I did earlier. There's a lot of questions on the how to remove vocals uh, using GarageBand, and uh, that was a video I put out a long time ago, and I kind of want to go back and re-articulate a little bit better what I was meaning uh, when I did that video. So when I did that video, I used the track for what it's worth, um, Buffalo Springsteen, and what you have to realize is you cannot do track inversions with GarageBand. You can do vocal reductions. There's uh, some some plugins that you can grab that will allow you to uh, reduce the vocals, but you will not be able to do any track inversion. And I'll explain uh, a little more later what that is. So, uh, so first off, let me show you for what it's worth, Buffalo Springsteen, and you guys can hear. Exactly clear. So you can hear that there's vocals in there right now. This is a song that was recorded in mono. When I'm talking about mono, I'm referring to the amplifier connections. So you have mono and stereo tracks. Uh, a stereo amplifier has two independent channels, one on the left, one on the right. Uh, it's, it's used to kind of give depth to song. So you can have the vocals kind of off-center, the strings on one side, drums on the other, uh, depending on how you want to record it. For mono recordings, even if you have two speakers, they're going to be bumping out the same exact uh, output. So when I have a song like this, for what it's worth, There's a man with a gun over there. I can just put it all the way to the right and take the vocals away. Well, I think it's time we stop, children, what's that say? So if that's starting to make a little bit more sense. Now, everything gets a lot more complicated when you start dealing with stereo tracks, when you're trying to remove vocals. And that's one thing that I really want to talk a lot more about in this video because it's a lot harder to find mono tracks than it is to find stereo tracks. The majority of the music in your iTunes is probably stereo tracks. So let's look at that. Uh, and I'm going to show you some of these new plugins that uh, Apple has on their website and show you how to use Audacity. It's free and it's a much better way. You'll save yourself a lot of time uh, if you're if you're trying to remove vocals. You know, GarageBand is not the place you want to be. So before we head over and start kind of uh, working with Audacity, I'm going to show you this new plugin. It's called the Vox Reducer. It's a second generation from LoudSoftware.com, and you can actually just go onto Apple's website, uh, and this is the where you can download it. You can click this link right here and it will just automatically install in your in your audio unit so if you want to get to it you can just make sure that this this eye is selected in the lower right hand corner go up to the edit tab and then click on one of these I already have one open and my Vox reducer is all the way at the bottom so what the Vox reducer allows you to do is you can kind of do some bass correction, treble correction uh, and there's some presets depending on the type of song you're using, jazz, light rock, hard rock. You can also adjust the intensity, but let me just show you real quick. This is a stereo track. So you can hear how it... it it really just kind of warps the sound. Um, I'm not a, a, a pro on this at all. Uh, I just started working with this Vox reducer, and you know I, I'm not a huge fan of it. If someone knows more information or I'm doing something wrong over here, please leave a comment. Uh, but you know that's that's one other option that you can use uh, if you're if you're trying to reduce the vocals. But the majority of people out there are trying to make instrumentals and that kind of deal. So 